at the moment my project happens to be the HTML file 385 lines of code and my Codica 274 and my CSS 120 so I've got hundreds of lines of code in my project now there's actually most likely several lines here that are redundant or not really doing very much we're going to shift gears a little bit to clean up a little bit of our project we have various copies of our project in various points in time so I will now be deleting things that are no longer functional to my project these things that I commented out that I may or may not use I have to make the decision do I want to keep that code or not it's taking up space resources in my project so um, Remember, I always put a copy of my work in the folder, and there's a copy of it before changes. But I'm going to go in and, and start to clean some things up. I'll start off with uh, maybe the smallest file first, the CSS file. Uh, I went ahead and opened the CSS, codica.css file. Let's see, I got a comment there, that's fine. I've got body with some comments applies to both header and footer equally. What was that all about? We were changing the size. Oh, that was when we were deciding on different size, the same size for the header and the footer, and we decided instead different sizes for the header and the footer. Now, that's gone since we have decided on a particular design. So I'm going to delete lines 19 to 23. Just going to delete all that stuff and clean up the empty space. Empty space there. Everything else looks like we kept it for a reason. I'm also going to add a little bit of a credit block or an author block to each of my files to show who worked on this. I personally, with most of the code that I work with, there's a certain version of the code that I am happy to give away to people uh, for learning experience or to take my project and add it to theirs and do whatever. Then at a certain point I don't give away my code, but uh, the reason I'm saying that is because if you would like to give your code away, maybe you want a little credit for it at least, or you don't care, whatever, but we're gonna add um, a little author block at the end of each of our files to show that it's yours. And remember, if you keep copying my code, it's gonna keep having my name, but at a certain point, uh, eventually, um, probably today, maybe Thursday, you need to finally use your version. I won't be giving you my code, the whole thing anymore, because it's going to keep saying the name of my app, with my colors, and my email, and all of that. If we are going to publish it for real at the App Store at a certain point, you it needs to be your app. So I'll remind us about that when we get to it. But here, uh, I'm going to create the multi-line comment block. I'm going to add author project version date description. These fields, of course, are all completely optional. But these are the ones I want to to use, and so. You'd be putting in your name however you want. Project my SDCE version. Uh, we will use the convention that we're using over on the config.xml file to remind us how that is. It's x.x.x, dot x dot x. Uh, major version, min middle version, minor update, I guess. So this is going to be version 1.0. Today's date, 2016.08.09. I'll put 0808 just because I like how that looks. It doesn't matter. But there's a version date. Today's date, however you want to write it. And description. Uh, the unofficial San Diego 
continuing education app. Anything like that is fine. Make sure it's a it's your multi-line comment. So the whole thing is commented out. This is optional, but maybe at least a little credit. You might want at least a little credit if this project ends up somewhere across the internet. No one really is going to see this unless they're actually looking at your source code. I'm going to save the CSS file and let's jump over to the HTML file. The, the JS file is smaller, but it's more complex, so we'll go over to the HTML file. And simply starting at the top, do a quick browse. I will leave that block about the uh, content security policy that is useful for us to look at and refer to as we work on these projects. Maybe an open, clean up an empty line and such. Line 10. Completely optional, but maybe tab these over. This is all just cosmetic. If it matters to you, it matters. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But uh, legend has it that even down to the minute detail of the original Apple computers, they were designed beautifully. Steve Jobs would throw a fit if that circuit wasn't at the right angle in the motherboard that no one would see. But it mattered to him, so if this stuff matters, it matters. Uh, extra Kodika features. Uh, I'll just take that out. We know what it is. Shore up those lines a little bit. Home start. We've got a comment here at about line 57. Static Google Map. We are never we never use that one really, and we are not going to. It's uh, it, it's much too basic of a map for us. So I'm just going to remove that whole comment block at about line 57. So I'm just looking out for comments that I might have left and empty spaces and such maybe. Your line numbers don't line up the same as mine, that's okay. This is just that I'm also putting a little space in between each of these sections. Um, it was inconsistent. There was a part where I had spaces between each section and a part where I didn't. Either or. No spaces or add spaces. I personally like to add a couple of extra spaces here and there, depending, just to delineate the different items as I'm quickly scrolling through my code. This will stand out to me. These two green lines with a space stand out to me. Extra Kodika features, sure. jQuery and jQuery mobile, yeah. Okay, so then um, we'll add the author block here as well. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different because it's HTML comment rather than CSS comment, but I'm going to copy everything there except for the uh, comment tag and I'll add this right before the end of body in HTML. Remember, we've got our multi-line comment like that. And in between the two, I will add my the same thing, my author block.
if you'd like to, you can of course go in to throughout your code and add meaningful comments here. I don't really have any in the HTML. I think it's much more straightforward. We'll probably add some meaningful comments in the JavaScript because remember the JavaScript is often the hardest of the three types of code we deal with. But if this were your own project, up to you. Perfectly fine then to go in and comment what's this mean, what does that do, etc. But mine has ended up being 390 lines in the HTML. Actually saved a couple of lines on the CSS. Save the HTML and then I'll go over to the JavaScript. This one's got a lot of cleanup to do. We've got a lot of re remnant code. Go back to the starting from the top. Uh, handle code of a pause and resume. I'm going to leave that. That just explains to me what that does. Document. Okay, we've got on click function. We'll delete that. That was just the old syntax, the JavaScript only syntax. We've got jQuery. So we're using the jQuery syntax. These two are equivalent. I'm going to take out line 14. It doesn't really do anything at all. If it's useful for you, leave it. We've got a whole chunk. We've got a bunch of console output that we may or may not decide to remove. Actually, I'll show you a trick about that in a bit. Um, but then we've got a chunk. What was this one? Oh, this was our base. What was this one? Local storage. We we're doing something with local storage, which I guess we're not doing that anymore. We've done it better. So I'll just delete that whole chunk. I'm going to an alert. Please enter a valid name, but we've got load name. Please enter. Oh, yeah, we don't need that one because it'll just happen silently in the background. So I'm deleting line 28 for that valid name check on load. I've got a whole thing about switch. Oh, okay, we did talk about switch early on regarding device manufacturer to make it do that vibrating and playing music that was annoying for a day. So we'll delete that and then something called kitty cat. Oh, that's the beeping. And then navigator alert. So another alert. Okay, I'm going to just delete that whole block. And mine is from 39 to 67. We're not using it for anything. It was more for proof of concept of what it does. I have a copy of it saved elsewhere if I need to get back to it. So taking it all out. Then I've got oh, a button, click, snap picture, on success, on fail. All of that was related to the camera. We may still add camera features to our project. We usually don't within the confines of the time that we have in the class. I have a copy of that code saved elsewhere. I'm going to remove it. PouchDB functionality starts, all of that stuff. Again, here I could be adding lots of comments about explaining, here's where I create the database, here's where I instantiate it, here's where I do this, do this, do that. I won't, but you could. An alert that shows that it all works. So I've got all of these remnants here and there where we're just showing ourselves as the process is going on that it's working step by step. If these were, use, were useful to you, leave them but I'm going to delete them. Line 68, I've got class saved. Oh, we just fixed that one. That was making the pop-up. The old pop-up, the new pop-up. Same thing on the next one. That's the old pop-up. We've got the new pop-up. And class, clear field, show class, show table of classes. Delete class. Oh, we, this is optional, but I didn't write here on line 153. This is the end of my update class prep. Since I'm using the default notepad uh, color scheme, I like that it's a nice big bright green, my comments. 
that um, helps me divide up the code as I scroll through it all. I think the other themes also show comments pretty obviously. Update the class function, delete database function, and delete db and on device ready. Okay, that goes back to our original on device ready. On pause and on resume. Those are still hanging around there since the beginning when we first set up Taco. I'll, I, I might do something with them later. I will leave those there with my comment um, that these are functions that fire when an on pause happens and when an on resume happens. Might use them later. So save all of that. And then uh, at the very end, I will copy the CSS author block as is because JavaScript does use the multi line comment, and I'll add it all the way in the end after the whole uh, the whole uh, immediately invoked function, line 221. Just putting it all in there. Doing a little math here, this is 737 lines of code on all my three uh, on all my three files. In other words, a small app. So I'm going to save all my files. I'm going to close, well, not yet. Uh, I'm going to save all my files. Um, and I've gone in and I fixed up and I cleaned all of the all of the different files there. Taking a quick look then in the actual folder. Let's do a little cleanup here in the project folder. Uh, in the images folder, everything that's here. We have some. We have some images actually that we never got to use, but we'll probably use them, or we could use them. Well, that Cordova, we probably will never use that Cordova icon. I'll remove that one. We didn't. We didn't use those tasty desserts. There's my picture. I don't know if we really want to use my picture in that. A uh, bunch of these other pictures and photos of the college. Yeah, actually, that's one little thing. This is just a proof of concept. My photo doesn't make sense as an icon. So I'm going to delete my photo. This is optional, but I'm going to delete my photo in my images folder, which means I need to then change my code here um, on the index file. I had, we had my picture on line 35. Data icon, my icon. We set up a unique icon, that picture that I gave you. Well, we're not going to use that picture anymore. Um, use the user icon. That shows a generic person or whatever makes sense as an icon for art. My icon was defined in the CSS file. Let's take a quick look at the CSS file because we have on lines 58 and 63. These are now referencing non-existent graphics. What I could do here is comment those out and I may then use my own unique icons later. 
that requires that I make icons, that requires that I open Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever and make icons. Probably won't do it, so we, this could be about 10 lines of code that we save. I have a copy of the code elsewhere, I'm going to take it out. I'm going to use the icons as is. If we had icons, we would use them, and that would be the code. These graphics that are there are not taking up that much space, so I'll leave them. We may still use them. The loader, of course, leave that, and then those icons, we'll leave all of those. In my case, I've got my fonts, Kodika file, JS file, index file, jQuery mobile, CSS and JS, the map file for debugging. Then we've got, notice, in my case, jQuery 1x, 2x, 3x. We cannot use 3x at all, as we saw last month. I'm going to delete that. We downgraded to 1.12 to have all of the functionality working. So we're not using 224, and that's taking up 84 megabytes. Oh, it's interesting that the 2x is smaller than the 1x. Uh, but we're not we're not using it, and uh, we may decide maybe jQuery 1.5 comes out in a couple weeks, which is compatible with 2x or 3x. But again, we're not going to update our base code in the middle of our project. So I'm going to delete it. Uh, I'm not going to keep the 2.24. My theme.min, that's the, that's the colors of my project. Leave that, of course. And pouch, leave that, of course. m.html, that is our map. We haven't touched that in a while. That's the one that makes our map functionality work. And what I mean is that we haven't, remember when we took time when we transfer the project from part one of the class into part two, we took time to copy over some lines of code from the original index file to our new index file. We didn't, we didn't do that for the M. This is going to be a little bit of uh, in-class homework for you. We're going to take a break in a moment, and you need to go into that M file to see what did we do, what do you need to do to get it up to code, up to spec. Very quick hint, if I open up both the index and the M and you look at them side by side, the point is your index file has various tags that your, that your map is missing try to make them line up. It's just like four lines of code. And then it'll be up to spec. We're going to take a break. 718. I'm going to do the changes here and then upload my copy of the work to the network folder and then in about 10 minutes we'll go on to the next step. So um, we'll be back at about 730.